As 2024 approaches, the hype for Little Nightmares 3 is growing exponentially. Theories and speculations are pouring in by the bucket load, some of them entirely plausible. Others, not so much. One of my personal favourite areas to consider is what menacing monstrosities we will be facing this time around. Could we see some familiar foes? Or will we be subjected to some entirely new nightmares? In this video, I would like to invite you, little ones, to open your minds to which potentially possible perils will oppose our pint-sized protagonists this time. These are the hostile theories. But first, the obligatory spoiler warning. This video will, of course, contain spoilers for Little Nightmares, Little Nightmares 2, Very Little Nightmares, all of the Little Nightmares comics, and potentially Little Nightmares 3, if we're right about this. And as always, a huge shout out to legendary Little Nightmares content creator, It's Just Jord, whose channel will be linked in the description below, and you should check it out because you'll get far more from his channel than you ever would from mine. He's my go-to Little Nightmares source, and he should be yours as well. If for some reason you don't know who he is, check my description and click on that link, because you won't want to miss what he's got. Now, as some of you that have seen my last couple of videos may note, I did say theories, plural, and not just theories. Owing to the fact that we are of course expecting to see several hostile enemies in this game. Although I fear the majority of them have not been revealed to us. Yet. So I'm going to explore which of these dangerously disturbing denizens are most likely to appear in Little Nightmares 3. And I'm going to start with an old adversary that the OG fans will be all too familiar with. Back in mid 2017. Titan Comics published a series of Little Nightmares comics which followed the story of Six and a small group of survivors as they recount their own intensely unsettling adventures. One boy in particular recalls a devastating encounter which took place in an unusually warm looking area. Bathed in a rusty orange glow, he and his sister are pursued by an evil ethereal enemy, the North Wind. Now, while the malicious motives of the North Wind were at least partially thwarted when the ferryman stepped in, he was very clearly not defeated. After having already laid waste to everything in his path in his ceaseless pursuit of the children, their only respite being to seek shelter from his power inside a building or reasonable structure. While it is true that the 2017 comics were discontinued, and the events depicted within rendered no longer canon, it is not unreasonable to assume that some of the characters contained within these stories could be retconned repurposed for use in the latest game like it seems Monster Baby has been from the old concept art in Little Nightmares 2. As we know, some of the characters from the comics have made their way into the games. So while their stories might not be canon, the characters are, at least on some level. For example, the Ferryman and the Mirror Man being featured in paintings on the moor, and more importantly, the boy who escaped the North Wind, also known as the Refugee Boy, being featured in Very Little Nightmares, even if only as a cameo appearance, does hint at the relevance of his tale. So although the North Wind was not directly referenced in the games, the only survivor of his story was. Other references which hint at the North Wind's presence in the new game include the choice of colour palette, the significance of wind throughout the existing footage, the ravens being present in both the new game and the only other place we've seen the North Wind pictured. And of course, the multitude of raven skeletons included in both works. Of course, this is entirely speculative, and any similarities between the comics and the new game could be completely coincidental. Or more likely, an entirely intentional red herring designed to keep people like us guessing, only to have our expectations subverted upon the game's release. But until then, we don't know. Now this is a bit of a longer one, but hear me out because this one's good. Also, I might be about to blow your mind, or at least make you think. So if I succeed at doing either of those things, let me know by smashing that like button because I had to work really hard for this one. Next up, we're going to investigate a character who, if you'd asked me previously, I would have deemed the least likely to appear in a Little Nightmares game, given that until recently, I suspected that this character had already been utilised, altered and implemented in Little Nightmares 2. The keen-eyed among you, and indeed the theorists and the intrepid fans, may well recognise this picture. 
This painting appeared obscured in the background of Little Nightmares 1 and was identified in the game files as simply Dr. No. Now, Dr. No has been the topic of many theories throughout the years and has proven to be one of the most difficult characters to connect in any way, shape or form to the nightmarish world that we're all familiar with. Those of you who've done your due diligence may well have already drawn a connection between the world of Little Nightmares and the 1995 French movie by the name of La Cité des Enfants Perdus, or The City of Lost Children. Early theories believe that our Dr. No could be some kind of overarching villain lurking in the nowhere who was based on the main antagonist, Crank, a scientist in a surrealist society who kidnaps children to steal their dreams, hoping that they'll slow his aging process. Which, given the premise of the original Little Nightmares game, coupled with the dystopian warped aesthetic of the nowhere, could make some sense. But would it not be more plausible to suspect that we've already seen Dr. No in Little Nightmares 2, given that we all remember the dietary challenge wall-crawling permable who gave many of us iatrophobia? That's the fear of doctors, by the way. And yes, if you disregard some of the <coughs> physical differences between Dr. No and Dr. No, we have since been introduced to another doctor. The Counselor Otto from the Sounds of Nightmares audio series, which if you've not listened to, I highly encourage you to do so because it reveals a lot about Little Nightmares. In a previous theory video, I speculated that Otto could very well be the mastermind behind the factory area. And if you haven't seen my video on the Candyland theory, I highly suggest you check it out because I believe it has some real merit and I worked really hard on it. But for the sake of time and effort, let me just bring you up to speed. After doing some research, I've come to believe that the factory section in Little Nightmares 3 is a candy factory. Otto is a children's counsellor who wears a spiral pendant and offers the children in his care candied sweets in order to win their trust before subjecting them to disturbing and invasive examinations with the goal of learning how to transport himself to the nowhere in search of his long lost sister who goes by Cece. It would make sense that if he managed to find his way to the nowhere and become corrupted by it as adults do, he would need to find a way of drawing children to him for whatever malevolent motives he has cooked up. And what better way than the one he was already using? Offering sweets for my sweet. But this is not just me recycling my own theory and then adding a branch. Because I have more reasons to suspect that Otto could be Dr. No and that he will appear in Little Nightmares 3. Let me explain. Exhibit A, Dr. Ingen. In 2017, Tazia Studios released a PSVR exclusive game named Static, which featured a character who not only subjects you to several uncomfortable psychological examinations, but who also references a raincoat in his dialogue. A character whose attire bears a striking resemblance to Dr. No, even going so far as to obscure his face. A character whose voice is eerily similar to Otto the Counselor. Now, in the English version of The Sounds of Nightmares, Otto is voiced by the exceedingly talented Kester Lovelace. Dr. Ingen is merely credited as himself in the static game credits. Curious, right? So curious, in fact, that I shamelessly and rather apologetically located the French studio where Mr. Lovelace was working and approached him directly so that I could question whether or not he voiced both characters. And his response was... classified. But I'm going to play you two clips of these characters and let you draw your own conclusions. You seem to be coping okay without any direction or hints so far. Unless you're keeping secrets from me, that is. Sneaky little thing that you are. Essentially, though, once you've figured out what to do, do it as soon as possible. Because time waits for nothing at all. I'll try to keep an eye on your general stress levels throughout. But it's nothing for you to worry about. Scent while dreaming is a rarity. An indication of sensory transcendence. She may be a fine candidate for a neurological study. But her health must come first. There are undoubtedly other details I missed in her recount. From the top, then. Sleep be damned tonight. 
and Kester Lovelace was actually good enough to introduce me to another piece of work that he actually wrote. It's nothing to do with Little Nightmares, but it's called A Lunch with Frank, and I found it really atmospheric, and uh, the voice acting drew me in really well. And it's just a really well-written piece, so I'll leave a link in the description to that as well. You guys should check it out, because if you liked him as Otto, you like him as anyone, he's fantastic. And as for Exhibit B... We only have one picture of Dr. No from the game files, and he does not seem to resemble a single character referenced in any of the Little Nightmares games, comics, or concept arts. Not one. Other than the Candy Crush enthusiast who I previously theorised could very well be what became of Otto the Counselor once he came to the Nowhere. Again, we're all just guessing. And it could be that the developers are all sitting behind their desks laughing at us mere mortals spinning long and intricate hypotheses about something they included as a quiet inside reference for their colleagues to get a smile out of. Moving on to our next potential big bad that a few people are convinced will make an appearance in Little Nightmares 3. Now you can trust me when I say that I personally would like to see this character make an appearance more than any other. However... I think of all the familiar faces I'm expecting to see in this title, this is probably the least likely to make an appearance. But not entirely impossible. You see, due to the fact that Six was technically already the final boss in Little Nightmares 2, I believe that the chances of it happening a second time are slim to none. But it's not fair of me to dismiss the involvement of Little Nightmare's most recognisable character simply because she's essentially had her time to shine. So I took note of a few thoughts and theories and tried to piece together a reasonable conclusion. Speaking of piecing together, I was presented with this image a while ago by Discord user Sky Law, awesome name by the way, who claims to have found this image in a video from YouTuber Joshua Chang, who has since removed all his little nightmares theories in favour of pursuing what his channel was meant for, which is his quite exceptional cartoon art. Unfortunately, I was not able to see his video explanation regarding this image before researching this topic, but he basically took a screenshot from the mirror in the Little Nightmares 3 reveal trailer and restructured them to create this image which does seem to resemble a distorted image of our raincoat wearing anti-heroine. Personally, I'm not 100% sold on the idea. And I think that my hope to see Six in the new game, even as a cameo, is giving me pareidolia, forcing me to see things that probably aren't there. To be honest, if I look for long enough, I start to see warped reflections of the lady's mask, which I think could also have some relevance given her association with the mirrors and the black smoke emanating from them being present in the lady's magic, her dolls, and in Six herself after she takes a bite out of our grim geisha governess. I am of course aware that the lady is thought to have died at the end of Little Nightmares 1, but if the time loop theory is correct, there's no reason why we couldn't see her again, and more importantly, we don't know yet when the new game takes place. For all we know, the lady could still be alive. And Six may not have chewed her up. Yet. A concept I would like to see explored more is that of Dark Six or Shadow Six. Chronologically, this character appeared first in Little Nightmares 2, right after the Thin Man snatched Six away, leaving behind her glitching remains. Again, it's not explained in detail whether or not this was a direct cause for the existence of Dark Six, or if Six's survival forced Dark Six to be given form by Six's malicious subconscious. I feel like Shadow Six is a character who deserves her own investigation. And sadly, I don't think she's overly relevant in the new game. But that doesn't mean I don't want to see her. Those of you who've been following this channel for a while will know that I know a little something about embracing your inner darkness. But I'll leave that explanation up to the comment section. Moving on, it's about time we address the elephant in the room. Hi. No, not you. As far as you OG fans are concerned, the most likely candidate of all the possible suggestions so far has got to be the Mirror Man. Again, we've already discussed the fact that the 2017 comics are not canon. But once more, we have easter egg references to the Mirror Man in the canon games, with his unsightly appearance making itself known in Little Nightmares 1 and Very Little Nightmares. And it is of course entirely possible that they could repurpose any character or any concept they want for use in future works. However, something else that we may be missing is the fact that these developers are all very aware of what we want and what we expect. 
so it's not outside the realm of possibility that they're pushing the mirrors as a major focal point as a red herring, with the intention of subverting our expectations at the last minute and then revealing that the mirror enemy is in fact inexplicably just a big old leech. So yes, while it is entirely plausible that we will be seeing the Mirror Man and experiencing some of the effects of his magic, such as distorting images and warping reality, nothing is concrete until the game is released. But it's a lot of fun to speculate. And there is one more special guest appearance that we may get to see. And while I don't think this character will necessarily be an enemy per se, I do think that if he does show his face, it will be with the intention of breaking all our hearts in true Little Nightmares fashion. And there is a reason I've saved this particular premise for last. Because I feel that if he does make a substantial appearance, it will be towards the end of the game. I know that I'm not alone in that I would absolutely love to see the ferryman make an appearance. And given his evident importance in the nowhere, it does seem plausible that he has something to do with this story. I wonder if the game is intentionally giving us a friend again and allowing us to build up a relationship with our characters much like it did with Six and Mono only for it to turn out that Lo or Alone didn't survive the early stages. Maybe Monster Baby actually managed to kill one of our main characters but the other survived and the rest of the game is actually spent with none other than the Ferryman in disguise who reveals himself at the end of the game in order to save our surviving protagonist from whatever vaporious horror lurks within the mirrors. We do have evidence that the ferryman is not only capable of such a feat, using his shape-shifting ability to take the form of a survivor's beloved friend or family member, but also that he's not above using this ability to manipulate a person into his grasp, perhaps only saving the children to further his own goal, which could be taking them to the mall. But who knows? I think the only thing that we can be certain of is that this game will not have a happy ending because it's little nightmares. <laughs> anyway guys, that's going to do it for my speculations. What do you think of my thoughts and theories? Do you think that we could see any of these characters in the new game? Or do you think they have something else in mind? As always, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below because I do love reading them and addressing my favourite ones at the end of my videos. Like this. Cornelius Corner says, Damn, you might be new in the Little Nightmares theory scene, but you're starting off with some solid theories. Here's one. What if the ferryman can leave the nowhere and come to the real world to steal children? I mean, Cece got stolen in her yellow raincoat. But well, when was the last time you slept in a raincoat? Alright, first of all, And secondly, yes, I absolutely think that's a possibility. The ferryman could totally travel between realms. In fact, he might be the only one that can. That might be his entire position. I addressed a comment like this a little while ago that referenced the ferryman and implied that he was a psychopomp, which is like a spirit guide. And that could be his entire position within the nowhere. That might be what puts him a cut above. Maybe he is a spectral, or maybe he's like a, a higher class of being, much like the North Wind or the Thin Man was supposed to be. We don't know his exact level of power, but we know that he's up there with the best of them. But it's never necessarily implied that he is a bad guy. He's not really an enemy, because we've never seen him actually hurt anyone. We've only ever seen him move them from one place to another and usually by means of rescuing them from another very powerful and very distinctive entity, like the North Wind and like the Mirror Monster. So yeah, 100%, I believe that he can travel between the nowhere and the counties and, and do what he pleases, yeah. And yeah, you're totally right. Like, it could very well be that they don't have to be sleeping necessarily. I mean, for all we know, Cece could have passed out in the raincoat. She could have been out in the rain. So yeah, absolutely possible, totally a headcanon yes, and thank you so much for your comment, I really appreciate it. Next we have Glitched Ghosts. They said, A theory of mine is about not being able to die, as when you die, you wake up, maybe you can die until you lose the will to live, as when you die in Little Nightmares 1. Two, you wake up like nothing happened, but in Little Nightmares 1 DLC, the puzzles don't get rest, and stay the same way they were when you died. My main reason for this theory is the Little Nightmares 3 gameplay where at one point it looks like Lo and Alone get crushed but wake up on a bed like nothing happened. 
Now, this is actually an interesting concept, and I didn't think of this before, but it's cool, right? I like this comment because it made me think about actual dreams and the real concept of nightmares in general. It's true that you can't die in your dreams, and if you ever do, you know, like you fall from a great height or you're, you're drowning underwater, you suddenly wake up like nothing happened back in your bed. And that does tend to be resembled in the characters that we see in Little Nightmares when you know, when a character gets caught, you know, if, if you get caught by an enemy or if something bad happens to you, you then go to a checkpoint, at which point your character wakes up. It might just be that that's the case. You're trapped in an everlasting nightmare. You die, you reset, you die, you reset because they can't wake up. So they're trapped in this everlasting nightmare and they can't actually die until they lose the will to live. But that's a cool one and it was actually resembled better in uh, if this theory is correct, in fact, because if... Low and alone were crushed by the monster baby and then they woke up as if nothing happened then that essentially proves this theory right but we don't know yet we've got to see we that might have just been a cheap way to end the um the gameplay trailer but we're not sure but i'm going to be looking out for this one so thank you so much for that that was interesting and the last one is from mooncake whose name sounds delicious they said the sounds of nightmares confirms that adults who have tormented others are allowed in the nowhere as disturbing creatures heck some kids are just so god awful that it seems like they become twisted themselves such as the bullies but that last part was speculation i wonder what the monsters in this franchise have done to deserve being trapped there what i do know is that what the hunter and the teacher's misdeeds are pretty self-explanatory. And that is true. They're actually called, like, if you look at the full names, they're called the bloodthirsty hunter and the sadistic teacher. So, yeah, the adults, they all have something seriously wrong, which is another reason why I feel like if Otto was transported to the nowhere, like the ferryman suggested in episode 6 of the Sounds of Nightmares audio series, that if he was to be transported to the nowhere he's too long in the tooth and he's too twisted so the nowhere would just warp him into an even worse version of himself it would take everything that makes him corrupt and awful every negative impulse otto carries with him will just be exploited and exaggerated many many times over no doubt shaping him into some like hideous monstrosity with nothing but malice on his mind now the children I'm not so sure about, and I know that you said that part was speculation and that's totally cool. Um, I'm not so sure I agree with that part just because all the children that we see are all sort of like manifestations, like the shadow children or the um, the, the bullies in the school. Uh, they're all like puppets, aren't they? They're all, um, they're all creations of these higher beings, but it's like they don't have any humanity or any soul or anything like that to them. It could very well be that they're the corrupt forms of the children, but a description I've seen way back when from Tazia Studios was that the nowhere is against everything that makes you a child so it actively seeks to weed out bravery and courage and curiosity and, and all the other things that make our characters so relatable but that's going to do it for this episode guys thank you so much for sticking with me i know this has been a longer one i wasn't sure whether i should break this up into separate videos or just give you guys one big long one but i figured with the amount of comments that i've got coming in and the amount of interaction that i'm really grateful for by the way that there's going to be plenty of more thoughts theories and speculations that i can play with outside of just the enemies so don't forget to leave me a comment in the section below, smash like on this video and of course subscribe if you would like to see more content like this from me. And again, thank you so much for your involvement in this franchise. I really, really enjoy your guys' involvement and I'm so glad you're liking what I'm doing. But that's going to do it for this episode. So until next time, that's game over. Bye.